Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. I am very, very excited today. Yesterday, I got a package that contained a bunch of these. Now you're saying, hey Bert, what are those little tiny things? Well, they are brass replacements for these little tiny plastic things. And you're saying, okay Bert, but you know, what are those little tiny plastic things? Well, they are the pinion gears for these ALPS printer plotter mechanisms. Now, back in the 80s, these ALPS mechanisms were used in just about everything. Commodore had it in the 1520, Atari had them in a little printer plotter. Uh, this one is out of a Sharp CE150 cassette printer interface for the uh, Radio Shack PC2 or the Sharp PC1500. And there is a slightly wider version in this portable printer for the Convergent Work Slate. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at how to install these guys. They've got to be pressed on and you've got to make a special tool for that, but it's inexpensive and it's easy to make. So let's jump right in. Okay, I got the mechanism out of the work slate, which is a little harder on this one because this ribbon cable was soldered to the board on the sharp printer. They thankfully used a connector, which made this a lot easier, but this was the first one I did and these gears are already on. So we use the work slate to show how to install the new gears. Now we will need a special tool to press these gears on. And fortunately, it is very simple to make. What you need is a C-clamp, one a little bigger than this. You need a 50 millimeter or two inch C-clamp. And they come with this little swivelly foot on here. And this swivelly foot has a ball joint on the started part. And this swivelly foot part is a socket like this. And in manufacturer, they put it together. And then this outer part is crimped down, so they're held together. So if you take a Dremel tool or a grinder or something and just grind around a few places like this, you don't have to grind all the way through, just almost all the way through. And then back the screw out like this, you can pop this guy right off the end there. And then you'll have something like this, but there'll be a little ball on the end here. And I just unscrewed this from the clamp, went on the bench grinder, and ground it relatively flat on the sides, although I managed to get this a little tapered, and you want it flat on the end. And this is your special tool. That's all there is to it. You can buy C-clamps already modified like this on eBay for about 10 bucks, but you know you can get these for a couple bucks on Amazon and make it yourself. To make the job easier, you can mount your C-clamp in a vise like this. I just took a little vise, screwed it to a piece of wood, and that'll make it easier. Now, on our printer, one thing we're going to need to do is take this cover off. If you look right here, you can see there's a little notch. There's a hole in this piece of metal, this bottom one, and this top cover here has a little tang that goes in it. I'm going to take a little screwdriver, slip it between those two pieces of metal and kind of twist back like this and you'll pop this guy up. And he just rotates off of there. And there's a couple tangs on the corners here that fit down in here when we put it back together. Now we have access to the stepper motors that our pinion gears go on. This stepper motor goes through a gear train and it feeds the paper. This stepper motor goes through another little gear train over to this spool that has metal wire on it and this is what pulls the carriage across. So this side that feeds the paper is easier. Uh, this side is a bit fiddly. So to make this side easier, we're going to take off this gear and this is really easy. Just put your finger over that clip like this to keep it from flying across the room. Pop that off slowly with the screwdriver. And then you can take that gear off. No problem. This gear set here is spring-loaded, so we'll want to pay attention to that when we put it back together. And this gear 
is already cracked right there as you might be able to see so it'll just probably pop right off here without too much trouble these gears come to in a package i've got them on my website the link is below okay actually i'm gonna switch the way the handle on this vise is to make this easier to do this side on camera because what we want is for our fixed jaw here to press on the shaft of the stepper motor on the back and from the front we will press this gear on. We can't just push on the shaft because we'll shove it through the stepper motor and ruin the stepper motor. Let me get this started in. Now this part's a bit fiddly and it's about four times as fiddly when you're trying to film it. Get this closer. And I'm going to pushing the mechanism this way to hold the gear in place. And I will slowly screw in the handle on the C-clamp until I get the tail end of the stepper motor, the shaft on the stepper motor, up against the side of the clamp. And if the gear starts going wonky, then just back off and recenter everything. This is going okay. I'm going to back off and check my progress here. Okay. We're doing good. And we've almost got it all the way on. There we go. Now. If we can get this to focus here, we see we've got the end of the gear and end of the shaft just about flush. And that is about right. Okay, now as I mentioned, this gear is actually two gears. This is an anti-backlash mechanism. When gears mesh, they go something like this. There's a little play between them. So if you put two sets of gears and spring load them, you always have one set of gear teeth in contact and you won't have that slot between them. I just realized that on the work slate printer mechanism that this gear set right here, which is in two halves and spring loaded together, is actually cracked. So I'm going to have to find a replacement for that, but I can show you how you reinstall this gear on this smaller mechanism out of the Sharp CE150. So we want to start the gear on like this. And then try to hold the back gear while rotating the front gear. And then slide it the rest of the way on. All you're doing there is spring loading those two halves of the gears. So one of them is always making contact in there. And then put your E-ring on there. Now we'll do the other side of the convergent mechanism. This is the motor that runs the carriage back and forth. And it's the trickiest part. On this side, we really don't want to remove any of these gears because getting them back on and everything spring-loaded will be a pain. And there is a little ridge on the back of this gear, so even though this is split, it's hard to take off. So just take a little pair of cutters. Don't hit the shaft, but snip a little bit of the gear off so you can get it off of there like that. Notice we're going to be pressing on with these meshing gears in place. So as we set that gear on there, we're going to slowly be rotating this to make sure we're staying in mesh. And we're going to do this very carefully and very slowly. And I'm going to start out with the carriage about in the middle here so I can move it either way. I'm going to use some small pliers to hold the gear in place while I press the mechanism into the gear which presses the gear into the threads of the C-clamp. And then as I tighten the C-clamp, it's going to push the mechanism over till the back of the stepper motor contacts the fixed jaw. Then I'm going to give the gear set a wiggle 
After tightening a little, I'll give the gear set a wiggle. I'll tighten some more, and then I'll give the gear set another wiggle. And we repeat the process several more times till we get the pinion firmly seated on the shaft. Make sure the motor's rotating with my gear. Very carefully pop it back down in there. Gotta make sure that, that the brass gear is staying square to the shaft. Turn it a little more. Just want to check your mesh again. That looks like we're doing okay. Yeah, okay. Now we're getting there. Yeah. So now we've got the gear started on there nicely, and it is in mesh. On this side, I'm going to keep watch and make sure that the shaft is just shy of the end of the gear. Okay. There we go. We've got that one on there too. And as you can see, if I rotate the stepper motor, the carriage moves. Success. Okay, we've got our gears on our mechanism now, so we need to put our back cover on. Remember, it's got these little tangs. There are some screws right here that hold the stepper motors in, and the tangs slip over those between this metal bracket that holds the stepper motor and this little arm. And you get that set up on both sides, and then push it down until it snaps. There we go. I'm going to solder this back onto the board, and we'll see how well this works, even though this set of gears here is broke. But our carriage should move now, and it should properly locate the pins and all that. Okay, we've got the printer assembled again, uh, even though our paper feed gear set over here is broken. It will still work okay. Good enough that we can see that the new pinion gears are doing their job. So if I turn this on, it's going to run the carriage over here. It'll hesitate for a second, and then it'll go ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. And what it's doing is rotating the pins around so it knows which one is on top. And then we should also be able to advance the paper. So the basic functions are working. Our new brass pinion gears are working good, and they should outlast the rest of the printer. If you should happen to have any extra of these mechanisms laying around for parts, and you have this set of gears here, the spring-loaded gears that feed the feed roller, let me know. I hope this little tutorial on how to press the new brass gears onto your Alps printer mechanisms has been helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And the link where you can buy your own new set of brass gears is in the description down below. Well, until next time. Bye.